Welcome to Journey with the Prophets. Our study series on God's revelations to the prophets throughout history, and what they mean to us today. In this video, we are going to look at Prophet Aaron, and how God wants his people to draw near to him. Did you know that throughout scriptures, God has revealed he wants to live among his people? Read about God's revelations to Prophet Aaron in Exodus chapter 40, and Leviticus chapter 1. But before you read, pray that God will open your eyes to his message for you today. We've already learned from Prophet Adam that no one can come near God. Human sinfulness and shame cannot coexist with God's perfection. But as revealed to the prophets, God's love and mercy is so great that he is determined to remove this barrier for eternity. But how? First, God revealed in tangible ways what it meant to draw near to him. He instructed Moses and Aaron to build a tabernacle when they were leading the people in the desert. The tabernacle is a holy place that symbolized God's presence among his people. The tabernacle had an outer courtyard with an altar, a basin, and a tent. The tent was divided into two rooms by a thick curtain. The outer room was the holy place, and the inner room was the most sacred place, called the Holy of Holies. After the construction, God filled the tabernacle with his glory. God has not abandoned his people, but had chosen to continue his promise to Prophet Abraham. Imagine seeing the glory of God with your own eyes. Of course, God is omnipotent and does not need a place to live. But he designed the tabernacle to reveal what it means for us to approach him. First, drawing near to God is a serious matter. We approach God on his terms, not on our terms. Only God knows how to deal with our sin and shame. Second, the tabernacle reminds us our impurity means we cannot enter into the presence of God. So the confession of sin and cleansing is the first crucial step. These are represented by the basin in the outer courtyard. God treasures a humble, willing heart that is willing to be transformed by God. Third, although no one could enter the Holy of Holies, God makes it possible for us. He anoints a high priest who could enter and seek forgiveness on behalf of all the people once every year. The high priest was chosen by God, not by men. After purification, he would pass through the curtain that separated God and the people. This is called the Day of the Atonement. The word atonement means the cleansing and covering of the sins of the people so they can be right with God again. Finally, we can enter into God's presence when our sins are covered by the blood of the sacrifice. God had revealed to Prophet Abraham how God would prepare this sacrifice. And he also had revealed to Prophet Moses how the blood of the sacrifice would spare the people from God's judgment. Remember to check out these two stories in our series too. This time, God revealed the requirements of this sacrifice. The animal must be without defect. Our own defects need to be covered by something that is without defect in order to be accepted by God. The people lay their hands on the animals as they confess their sins to God. In doing so, they symbolically pass their sins to the animals that will take God's judgment on their behalf. But the high priest does not do the killing. The people have to do it, as a reminder of the brutal consequences of our sin. The high priest then collects the blood, and sprinkles it at the altar. Because this is what God promised, for the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar, it is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. Atonement is bloody and costly, because our broken relationship with God is bloody and costly. But God's mercy is far more powerful. He promised to make our reconciliation with him possible forever. Check out our other videos and see how God will continue to accomplish his plan. So what are your thoughts after reading the story? Here are some questions for us to think, pray and share. Question 1. What is God's attitude towards sin? What is your attitude? 2. According to God's revelation to prophet Aaron, what would qualify you to draw near to God? 3. What have you learned about what God wants in our hearts and lives? How would you respond to God? 4. Who will you share this story with? That's all for this video. If you have questions, feel free to comment or contact us at bemylight.net. If you like the video, remember to like and subscribe. May the presence of God and His glory fill every part of your life, just as He did in the tabernacle. See you in our next video.